Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, yes, uh, let me just say before we start, I, I, I see the importance of this project. Um, we were talking about it just now to say that we have about 600 attendees um, for this event. So I'm so glad to see that there is so much interest in the project and the need and the benefit of this type of project. So from my side, welcome, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoy the session today. Um, and you participate. Um, we'll talk about that later on in the project that um, there is participation that is needed in the project from your side. But from my side, um, welcome everyone. I'm the chair of this session today. My name is Dr. Humphrey Bryden um, from the Department of Statistics and Population Studies at the University of the Western Cape. Um, we unfortunately are having a slight connectivity issue. So our um, our person that would have been doing the official welcome is unfortunately not able to connect this morning, but we will continue nonetheless with uh, the rest of our program. Um, so I would like to welcome our first speaker um, for the session today. Um, that is Ms. Deshni Govender um, from, oh, let me get to this because this is quite a nice profile. So Deshni Govender is the country lead for Fair Forward Artificial Intelligence for All from GIZ. Um, and She's also been listed in the 100 Brilliant Women in AI Ethics 2022. Now, I wanted to think of something smart to introduce Deshni, and I went and I looked on a LinkedIn profile, and I found one phrase there. So, Deshni, apologies, I'm going to plagiarize you here, but there's a very nice phrase that she has there, and it says, presently using my superpowers to democratize AI in Africa. So, Deshni, welcome, and thank you for speaking today. Um, Deshni will provide more context and background to the importance of this project. So Deshni, the floor is yours and thank you again. Cool. Um, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending where you are in the world. Um, I'm actually just advised that Angela is online, Humphrey. So, um, dum dum dum. Um, My apologies. Uh, uh, yes, yes, you know, on the next episode off, uh, before we get to me, um, we could get Angela online. I'm not sure, Angela, if you can actually um, put on your video, if you can. Apologies for that. I, I was, I didn't see Angela when I was speaking. So thank you for that, Dishni. Um, Angela, are you there? Sure. Maybe we should have used the AI to help us. This is what happens. Only humans, no AI. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and uh, I apologize in advance for the voice. I promise you I tried to speak as little as possible this week um, to be able to to be able to get enough um, traction. So um, thank you and welcome. And once we have sorted out um, our speaker um, intros, we will then go. I'm Yes, not thrown out of the bus. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, I am also a little overwhelmed because I was told this morning there's like some 600 plus people online and I was just like, oh my God. So um, with this, in terms of the intro, I would like to firstly say thanks for joining us and thank you for your interest in this event. So basically, what are we doing? Why are we here? What is what is the purpose? Who is GIZ? Why are UWC and SICA and GIZ also um, collaborating? Well, firstly, GIZ is an international development agency and a public benefit entity who um, basically whose purpose of the company is to promote international cooperation and sustainable development in international um, education. So basically, in the countries that we work in, we are there to uplift those ecosystems and economies. In particular, the project that I work for, if you digitally stalked me already, um, it's a project called Fair Forward Artificial Intelligence for All. And, <coughs> apologies. Hmm, we have Angela online. I wonder if I should then make, maybe make a, a then another um, interesting and very entertaining dramatic pause. Um, I see Angela's used my link. Thank you. So it, I promise you there are no two Deshneys. It's not AI. You are not going crazy. I will stop here and let Angela do the introduction and then we will come right back to who is Fair Forward, what we are about and why we are doing this project. Perfect. Thank you, Deshni. Thank you, Angela. Um, connectivity issues as always, but thank you for joining us. Um, so 
Um, Angela, well, um, Angela Schumer, uh, just to introduce her to everyone, is the operations manager at the CSI Hard. Um, she comes with a deep and extensive experience in artificial intelligence, um, with extensive experience in managing projects within various sectors, and she has a dedication for advancing AI technologies for social benefit. Uh, so Angela is joining us today as a representative of the CSI Hard. So Angela Schumer, thank you so much for joining us and I'll hand over to you to do the official welcome, although we've technically started, but I'll hand over to you to do the official welcome. So thank you. No, thank you so much. And also for being patient with me. I hope you can hear me clearly now. Yes, we can. And we can okay. see you. As you have already introduced me, I'm honored to represent the Council for the Scientific and Industrial Research, which is the CSIR. And um, as you have said, we are so happy that it's not just us that are here, but also our panelists, colleagues, partners, and students. So the CSIR is one of the founding partners of this initiative. So with the CSIR, we're working with other organizations as well which is GIZ Faith Forward. And we also have the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, known as SICA. We also have the University of the Western Cape, which is UWC. So as we have joined together, the goal of this initiative as founding partners is to just try and develop a framework that empowers government to assess the maturity of AI in the different sectors in the country. So we have been working, working together in this journey, just as the few of us, but now we felt that it's time that we invite all of you guys to journey with us as we launch this project. We want to create an opportunity as a society so that we can leverage the power of AI to drive positive change and also make a tangible impact on the lives of all South Africans. So this our project is not just about embracing technology, but it's also um, going to harness the potential to create inclusive opportunities for our students, for our civil society, and also address the key challenges that we have in our society today. So I'm so happy that you have joined us today, and I hope you're going to enjoy what we have prepared for you. The other thing that I find very um, interesting about the initiative that we have started is that we are going to show the power of collaboration because yes we are working as the founding partners but we have also included the department of communications and digital uh, technologies which is ddt at uh, dcdt so you know that we cannot work without government so that's why we have included them in this initiative so that we can drive this innovation and also foster sustainable development. So as we embark in this journey, we want all our stakeholders to just join us, to be active participants. We're calling upon academia, the civil society, industry, other government um, agencies as well and departments. So that this can be a very diverse um, project and we'll be able to work together and also um, ensure that we do um, formulate our policy guidelines. So I encourage each one of you guys to just actively participate, share your insights, contribute, join our workshops, and ensure that we make South Africans proud and we have a, um, a project that we're all proud of. So welcome once again, let's work together. Let's make AI work for all South Africans. Thank you so much. Handing over to Deshni. Thank you, Angela. Um, now that all of you are awake and aware um, and very intrigued about what is going on, I would go back to explaining to you and, and maybe indulge you a little bit more. So fair forward, artificial intelligence. What We are the project that we are the flagship, one of the flagship projects in GIZ that works and is working collaboratively, as you've heard from Angela, to strive for a more open and inclusive and a sustainable approach to artificial intelligence on a national, international level. So the Project Fair Forward, which is one of the projects at GIZ, we work across seven countries, five countries in Africa, so that's South Africa, 
Ghana, Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda, and as well as um, two countries in Asia, which is also India and Indonesia. So we have a very Pan-African um, regional, but also global approach. And we work on three main pillars. So that is improving access to data and developing open and non-discriminatory data sets, including training data for AI technologies and local innovation. And I emphasize local innovation. We also do this particularly in the fields of NLP, which is natural language processing, as you know, that feeds your generative AI. We do it for open language data and also for com computer vision. We work to strengthen local know-how and capacity development and capacity development we know is absolutely critical on the African continent, um, actually in global South in general, but we also support learning opportunities, not only for the citizens, but for our partners and government, because we feel it's really important for policymakers to also be capacitated when they can walk this journey with us. And of course, for the main reason we are here today, we are developing policy frameworks for ethical AI data protection and privacy. And we've also walked this journey in other countries, including, for example, Rwanda, Ghana, the Telangana state um, of India, where we've also worked with partners in those local ecosystems to develop AI strategies and governance frameworks. So enough of all the fine print. Why are we actually here this morning? What is the maturity assessment about? What is a maturity assessment even? So we know for a fact that AI has basically permeated our lives at every level, whether you want to admit it or not, it's there, you are using it, fact. And as a country, we know that we also need to stay on par with global advancements of technology, but particularly AI and emerging technology and the development, but as well as the regulation. But if we're saying, cool, let's, let's regulate the technology. If we had to do that today, where do you start? At what angle, at what sector, at what juncture do you say, let's start looking at the technology, investigating it or regulating it? So we ask ourselves, what goals do we want for us as a country first? What do we as South Africa want? And I mean, in short, one of the main reasons is we want to stay competitive as a country. We want to be that country that people look to us to say, yes, they are a leader or they are globally competitive. We want an intelligent society. We want an intelligent economy. And we also want intelligent environments as well, like smart cities. <clears throat> so if we're saying, cool, the global trend is to regulate and develop a strategy. Okay, but from what point and what benchmark do you start? Where do you start developing a strategy? If I put it to the question now to the audience, what is our current position on research and development? Where are we with AI education? Where are we with developing and advancing local AI in South Africa and developing local technologies? Like what is that? What is that benchmark? What is that ecosystem? What are our enablers and resources? What is our data ecosystem? These are some of the questions that we've considered and hopefully we will hope to answer with this project and answer in a way that is right and appropriate for South Africa and take into account our circumstances as South Africa, our culture, our language, and our people. And so GIZ, Fair Forward Project, together with the CSIR, together with the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, SICA, um, then tended, we put out a tender last year, as you would know, um, you would have seen the public tender to for the AI maturity assessment, and we are very, very proud to say that we are now partnering with the University of Western Cape, who has been appointed to walk with us on this really very cool journey. And of course, at all times, our main partner, the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies, and of course, a mention to the Department of Science and Innovation under which the CSIR falls. We are really actually very proud to say that for the first time, we have these two amazing government ministries that are collaborating to actually work together and make South Africa, put South Africa on the map. So we've embarked on this very cool journey, which would see us making strides towards, towards developing an AI strategy and policy in line with the DCDT's National AI Plan. But... What does that even mean? So where are we? What is the framework assessment framework about? So the framework will basically empower government to conduct a comprehensive evidence-based analysis of the level of AI maturity in the different sectors in South Africa. And that will provide crucial insights into our position on the global AI journey. So it's not just about South Africa, but also South Africa in comparison with the world. And the data and the insights that emanate from this will also inform targeted interventions 
targeted interventions to bolster um, any thriving sectors and also help the sectors that are not performing. And so um, you will get more information, but basically the project in a nutshell is gonna run until February next year and produce four key outputs. What are those outputs? We will develop a framework. So it's a comprehensive situation and data analysis that will evaluate the country's readiness of AI and maturity. We're going to publish an annual report, of course, because we're not gonna do all of this work without telling everyone what was done and how we did it. And we, um, and then that will be published towards the later part of this year or early next year on the state of AI readiness in South Africa. We will develop and design an online and very interactive data visualization dashboard, because now we have all of this cool data and data analytics. What do we do with it? We share it with our people. So that is gonna support the framework and it's also gonna be a digital public good that will be housed at the CSIR. And of course, after all of this and all of the consultation with you as part of the journey, with our citizens, with the partners, as part of the journey, we will formulate policy recommendations on the insights and everything that we've uh, established and put those forward to government to look at what a good strategy would be for us. So I am going to stop at this point, but I am going to say that I'm super excited because our journey is going to be super collaborative and interdisciplinary. We want youth involvement. We want young professionals and experienced professionals involvement. It is going to be human-centered and very contextual. So I will stop right here and hand over back to our um, chair and host, Humphrey. Thank you very much, Deshni. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the background there. I think it, uh, we mentioned the participation that we would like, as, as it's been mentioned, it is a multi-stakeholder uh, project. Um, we will talk a bit more about that at the end and how you can get involved in the project, um, but we do, uh, there will definitely be a way for all participants and anybody that would like to be involved in the project, we, will, we do have a way for you to get involved, but we'll talk about that a bit later on. Um, so introducing our first panelist. So our panel Panelists today are going to talk about a bit more about the need and the importance of this type of project and where they specifically see it fitting in. Um, so I'd like to welcome our first panelist for today, who is Professor Jacques Hubert, um, who is a professor in the School of Pharmacy at the University of the Western Cape. Um, he's an accomplished academic and researcher uh, with a research focus um, in advancing the application of artificial intelligence tools in the healthcare settings and also has further been involved in the development of artificial intelligence translation tools for multilingual communication in healthcare. As we know, South Africa, we have multiple official languages. So that last project, very cool, Jock, and I hand the floor over to you. So thank you very much for joining us today. Are you there, Jacques? Yeah, sorry, I'm here. I just got, got kicked out um, quickly from the Zoom meeting. Let me just reshare. You can just tell me when my screen is showing. Your screen is showing, um, but we are seeing the... There we go. Perfect. Okay, thank you. I'm not okay. too sure if you heard me welcoming you. You may continue, sorry. No, thank, thank you, you. Yeah, thank you. I was just kicked off quickly from the Zoom meeting, but it, it all seems fine now. So um, thank you, everybody. And thank you um, for giving me this opportunity to be a panelist member um, for, for this um, framework. Um, and I will be representing UWC and our um, AI Maturity Assessment Framework Project Development Team. So to start off with, um, imagine a future where every South African has their life enriched by the power of AI. This is the goal of the AI maturity framework, where we see AI where we could inform, could transform life across South Africa, from enhancing ag agriculture in the Cape Winelands to improving urban planning in Johannesburg. It could revolutionize education with personalized learning, advanced healthcare with AI powered diagnostic tools, and also support local businesses with AI driven market tools. Humphrey, sorry, I see my screen is frozen again. I am here. There we go. It went okay, to the thank you. Okay, so what is an um, AI maturity, maturity assessment framework? An AI maturity assessment framework is crucial for measuring and advancing South Africa's capability in AI technology. 
It aims to provide a structured pathway for technological empowerment and also ensure equitable progress across, across different socioeconomic um, landscapes. We aim to make AI work for all. And by improving South Africa's AI capabilities, we pave the way for a future where innovation can flourish. So if we look at, um, at AI, where, it, uh, where we currently stand in South Africa versus um, global trends, we can already see in this graph that South Africa is lacking behind. So both globally and in South Africa, the adoption rates have been increasingly over the years. But South Africa is, shown, shown, uh, is trailing behind this global trend. Some of the reasons for this is infrastructure issues, skills shortages where there's lack of AI trained professionals, economic constraints because of the high cost of setting up data centers and high cost of certain um, AI tools. There's definitely a regulatory gap where we're currently in the Wild West still with AI, where we have unclear AI regulations and guidelines. There's some cultural hesitance where certain people um, do not adopt the new technologies as quickly as other people. And also the data limitations where we have poor data availability and the quality of data that we currently have available is not good enough really to train these AI tools and we need more data. So this highlights a significant opportunity for South Africa for growth and innovation. By advancing AI maturity, it's essential for enhancing economic growth and strengthening our global competitiveness. Now, if we look at two sectors where AI can really play a role is in healthcare and in education, where AI can be used to empower diverse communities across South Africa and bridge the technological divide between urban and rural areas. If we look at this, um, this graph on the left-hand side, we can see the impact of AI telemedicine in remote areas. And this is based on global data. It's not specific to South Africa, but we can already see that AI telemedicine used in other countries where, AI, where it uses AI to provide medical care from a distance. It's uh, helping to diagnose and treat patients remotely, remotely through data analysis and monitoring. And we can already see this um, improvement in patient access, the efficiency of treatment, it's more cost effective, and the quality of care has improved with the integration of AI. Now with education and something that I'm very passionate about with the impact of AI driven personalized learning and especially in rural areas where each and every student can have a AI tutor or a personalized AI tutor in their pocket in a smartphone, where AI-driven personal learning has shown to significantly boost student engagement. It has improved the performance of students and something in South Africa that's very important is also improved literature um, uh, rates where it's shown um, to have done this in other countries. So definitely there is an opportunity here for South Africa to adopt AI and really work on these two areas um, for improvement. So collecting more local data, as I said previously, we need more data. And that's where we need your input as well as what have you been doing? What have you been doing in healthcare? What have you been doing in education within your business? How have you adopted AI? Um, and um, this is then crucial for us to accurately measure South Africa's AI maturity and to effectively then develop and use our maturity assessment framework to achieve our specific goals. If we also look at the value and benefit of an AI maturity um, model, we can see that it, it will serve as a structured guide to evaluate and enhance our AI capabilities. It will also inform strategic decisions in AI investment and policy making and ensure that our resources are effectively allocated for optimal growth. It can be used as a measurement for improvement where it tracks advancements um, of AI proficiency over time and also identifies areas where there's further improvement necessary. We hope that this model will also innovate, uh, will be also go, 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 an innovation catalyst where it encourages new ideas and new technologies that are going to be developed in AI and that we as South Africa and as South Africans can push the boundaries of AI, current AI capabilities. So the AI maturity assessment framework or model offers a roadmap specifically tailored to South Africa's unique context and promoting strategic AI growth and innovation for local businesses and for the general public. So why is there a need for a local uh, maturity assessment framework model? There are other assessment models available um, in other countries, internationally, in the global north, 
and even in other African countries. But why do we need one that's specific for South Africa? So cultural and linguistic relevance, we need to ensure that the AI models and measurements are culturally and linguistic adapted to South, uh, the South African context. It needs to bridge the technological divide by addressing historical in inequalities that impact access to education and technology and focus on creating equitable opportunities for all. When we need to focus on education and employment and pro prioritizing AI education from school levels up all the way up to, um, to, to tertiary level where we, where we include um, AI, the different AI education and AI tools that we can enhance um, our education systems with. And it's potential to significantly impact job opportunities across different sectors. We know that AI, and not a lot of people are talking about this, where AI may displace um, certain jobs, especially jobs where there's automation involved. But we need to ensure that it's just the role that changes of those people, but not that it is actually then taking over somebody else's job. So the, it's also important for us to develop these, to, these tools uh, locally, so local AI tools, so creating AI solutions that recognize and process South African languages and facilitating a broader accessibility. Now, there's one tool that we are currently developing at UWC known as Mazanzimet. We're doing this in collaboration with the Medical Research Council of South Africa, as well as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where Mazanzi Met is being developed as an AI app that aims to offer instant, accurate, and culturally sensitive translations for effective healthcare communication in South Africa. Now, I know there are other translation tools available like Google Translate and so, but if you go and play around on Google Translate and really try and, um, and, and, and translate um, certain texts into one of our 11 official languages, you see that they, it's, it's not 100% accurate, it's not culturally sensitive, um, and um, it's not specifically tailored to South Africa. So we are working on a new model so that we can have effective healthcare communication in South Africa. So that's something that we're currently working on um, at UWC. So how do I see um, a roadmap for AI maturity in South Africa? It needs to include inclusive dialogue, where there needs to be open communication from various stakeholders, including government, tech leaders, and the public. We need to co-create AI policies, uh, apologies, uh, sorry, policies that reflect diverse needs and perspectives. It needs to be a collaborative process, a collective effort to harness AI's potential so that we can improve our living standards and solve current pressing issues um, in South Africa. We need to optimize AI for good so that it can enhance everyday life of our citizens ensuring that it benefits all segments of South Africa. Yes, there are other maturity assessment frameworks available globally, and we will engage with other international bodies, but we need to adapt this framework specifically and implement these AI practices tailored to South Africa's needs. So in closing, join us in shaping the future of AI in South Africa. We need your contribution. So we're calling on you to actively participate, get involved. So engage with us through this project, through the workshops that we will be hosting, seminars, and other on ongoing projects that's currently, currently ongoing. Share and in the reach. So contribute, contribute your insights, contribute your resources. What have you been doing in AI? How have you been able, uh, implementing AI to improve yourself, improve your abilities, and being more efficient? to enhance South Africa's AI ecosystem, ensuring that AI works for all. So that brings me to the end of my slides. And these are just the references that I've um, used. Very interesting reading um, if you are interested. Thank you very much, Humphrey. Thank you very much, Jacques. Uh, the slides, I can tell you, we're watching the chat and everyone's really interested in your slides. Um, so there is a comment there regarding the, the presentations and the... Yeah. the we will get to that a bit later, but thank but you I can, very much. I can, I can comment on that quickly. A lot of this has also been um, AI used with AI tools, where it's a human and AI collaboration. So that just shows you how you can improve your slides as well. <laughs> <laughs> let's, yeah, let's leave it thank there. You. Thank you very much, Jacques. Very interesting presentation and very much showing the need for context 
um, with the framework as well. So thank you very much. Um, our next panelist is Ms. Deborah Setsiba, um, who is the who is a director um, of Information Society Development and Analysis at the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies. Um, she also serves on the Digital Skills Forum. Um, Deborah brings with her today um, 18 years of experience um, within the ICT sector. So Deborah, thank you very much um, for joining us um, today and I'll hand the floor over to you. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm still struggling with my video. Um, the last time I forced it to work, it kicked me out. So unfortunately, um, uh, you won't be able to see me, but we'll definitely meet when we conduct our workshops moving forward. Um, from our side um, of government, um, ladies and gentlemen, it is such an honor for me to be part of this important platform here today. I would like to thank you for inviting me to be a member of the panel that has the most difficult task ahead in developing the AI maturity assessment model for South Africa. And my presence here signifies a shared commitment between government and relevant stakeholders, our civil society, academia, you know, working together in shaping our national technology advancement so that um, we can move forward and be amongst the best in the country and globally. Uh, one scholar once said that um, imagination is more important than knowledge. Today, let's explore how imagination can lead us to innovation and progress. Our role as, as um, government uh, in participating on this project uh, will, will be to support the uh, policy development process of the AI maturity assessment model. Um, this will be guided by the implementation of the Presidential National Commission on 4IR, which is regarded as a national guide for digital transformation for South Africa and a tool for development that will advance our social and economic prosperity. Um, furthermore, the eighth recommendation of the report, they promote the institutional mechanism that will guide the governance and regulatory environment of the AI space. In this regard, um, when we develop uh, this model, we need to conduct an analysis on key enablers required in relation to South Africa AI landscape and come up with strategic interventions that will address the unique context of South Africa. Furthermore, there is a need for a global assessment on how countries are responding to artificial intelligence because these interventions differ in terms of continental, regional and national circumstances. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot develop a model without any policy and regulatory environment. It is very critical that we assess the existing regulatory framework related to AI in South Africa. We need to evaluate how comprehensive and adaptive it is to bear rapid change AI technology. Our government is coming up with initiatives, strategies, investment opportunities that will promote AI research, development and adoption in the country. In this regard, it is critical that we develop legislative frameworks that are aligned to South African national development agenda and that are responsive to South Africa's socioeconomic development challenges, which are aligned to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The DCDT, in response to that, is currently in the process of developing and finalizing the data and the cloud policy and the digital economy master plan. Those policies will serve as a tool for digital transformation in South Africa. There is a need for revising some of the current policies which are not aligned to the current technology development. We are working towards the development of a South African international and intelligence uh, plan, which will encompass all AI initiatives around the country to ensure that artificial intelligence the key role players can agree on national priorities and objectives that will ensure prosperity and growth through the adoption of artificial intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to emphasize that the plan is a working document. It was launched um, by our minister, I think um, it's about two, two weeks ago at the summit, which was uh, hosted by our department. The working document that will give an overview of artificial intelligence 
landscape in South Africa and the impact brought by both version of applied and generative AI. The draft plan will be used as a consultative document that will assist government in consultation with industry experts to come up with an inclusive AI national plan. Now, the big question is, is South Africa ready for digital transformation? I'm sure we all agree that not yet they, but we are limping towards that goal. Do we have the infrastructure and connectivity to implement initiatives and AI applications? This is what government is pushing at this current moment. We need to evaluate the state of digital infrastructure and connectivity across different regions in South Africa. We need to assess the availability and accessibility of high-speed internet, data centers, cloud computing services, which are essential for AI applications. Implementation of SA Connect is very critical. We need to acknowledge that broadband is no longer a need, but it's a human right. What is the state of readiness and education and workforce? We need to bridge the skills gap readiness of workplace by conducting an analysis on the quality and availability of AI related education and training programs in South Africa that can be adopted and use, utilized for AI technologies in various sectors, including university modules, uh, school curriculums from primary to higher education, vocational training, online resources. So in response to bridging the gap, the skills gap, the department has developed a digital and future skills strategy of which we are currently implementing in partnership with GIZ and other stakeholders as well. The department uh, in implementing this, we have launched the establishment of a digital skills forum, which is mandated to make sure that the digital skills gap is closed in South Africa. People are skilled, reskilled and upskilled on digital technologies. Research and innovation is very critical as well. Government has launched two major initiatives which are key in evaluating the AI landscape and the level of AI research and innovation happening within the academic institutions, research organizations, and industry in South Africa. DCDT has established Institute of South Africa uh, in Artificial Intelligence in 2022 and the Center for Artificial Intelligence Research by the Department of Science and Innovation. We need to have a plan that will ensure that we use data centers AI hubs that we've been launching to the advantage of the people of South Africa, including our regional and continental partners. International collaboration, most critical. We need to learn from the best. When developing the maturity assessment, South Africa must take advantage of our participation at international platforms. We need collaborations. We already have bilateral agreements with different countries. As I'm speaking right now, we have a delegation at G20 and AI is one critical component of that meeting. Our partnerships such as, you know, BRICS, ITU, G20, UNESCO, WEF, you name them. We need to take advantage of those platforms. We need to use those international engagement platforms for knowledge transfer, exchange of expertise, and capacity building through dual networks and platforms. We need to look at how other countries are addressing their adoption to AI and other digital trans uh, transformation initi initiatives. We need to highlight the best practices and lesson learned that can be replicated and scaled up to accelerate AI maturity across different sectors and regions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be closing very shortly. I need to emphasize that we need to be wary of the ethical dimensions and societal implications in this regard. As government, we need to consider the ethical, legal and societal implications of AI adoption in South Africa, including issues related to bias, privacy, accountability and job displacement. We need to evaluate the efforts to address these concerns through ethical guidelines, public awareness campaigns, regulatory frameworks, not forgetting issues of local law, uh, language and security and safety, which has been raised by the previous speakers. AI system can introduce new security and safety risks, including the potential to malicious or unintentionally 
you know, damage reputations and data of the country. Protecting individuals um, uh, through the Cybersecurity um, Act and other uh, frameworks and strategies that are still going to be introduced uh, to make sure that our people are protected from these digital technologies. Finally, um, when we look at uh, addressing uh, dimensions of um, um, uh, artificial intelligence and, and human rights, they require collaboration among policymakers, technologists, ethicists, civil society to develop the frameworks. Regulations, best practices, are very fundamental um, for, for human beings. So in this way, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for this opportunity and looking forward to further engagements and making sure that we achieve our goal. I thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. I think you've hit, a, you've hit all, a lot of the points there that we need to consider within this the, the development of this framework there. I think for myself, one point you hit very importantly is the ethics implications, the legal implications yes. of mm -hmm. AI. So thank you very much for your talk. Um, we'll leave it to the end for Q&A. Um, see, we sort of run it over, a bit over time. So I'd like to introduce our next speaker, um, Ms. Shamira Ahmed. Um, Shamira is the Executive Director of the Data Economy Policy Hub or Dev Hub. Um, and is also the founder of the Artificial Intelligence for Circularity Exchange. I, I pronounce that correct. Um, she's furthermore an experienced um, policy entrepreneur, a quantitative economist, and an interdisciplinary policy and research specialist. So Shamira, thank you very much for joining us today and I'll hand the floor over to you. Uh, thank you, Humphrey, for the opportunity to be part of the launch of the South African AI maturity assessment framework. Um, and I think because a lot of the speakers have highlighted what is very important as part of the maturity assessment, I will focus on some of the dynamics that haven't been mentioned. Um, for example, it is imperative to underscore three main considerations that are essential for transnational benchmarks, which this is essentially, as other speakers have mentioned, South Africa's local innovation system or the dynamics of AI and the broader digital economy don't happen only at a local level. There are also uh, global dynamics that need to be considered. Uh, other speakers mentioned how infrastructure investments are conducted, um, access to high quality machine readable data and computing power, and also how we create value from the public data available to have technological innovations and data innovations such as AI to um, ensure that whatever innovations we have in our local ecosystems not only meet the international best practices and standards, but are also localized to our concept, uh, contextual realities. And another point I'd like to highlight on is this first speaker, I think it was, um, his name was Jacques, spoke about uh, inequalities. And we all know that inequalities are not a monolith, they're intersectional inequalities. And often there are people who are often more marginalized when we consider inequality. So we need to go further instead of talking about overlapping inequalities. There are a lot of studies in South Africa that show that women, people with disabilities often face more marginalization in labor markets, in the health sector, and in many other um, um, sectors where these AI applications can be useful to improve competitiveness, enhance innovation in local ecosystems, and uh, overall enhance society and in in economic in opportunities for all South Africans. So in essence, the AI maturity framework definitely serves as a compass in our quest to unlock the transformative potential of data-driven innovations and AI, and can also be used as a benchmark for other database systems beyond AI, because you can use some of the indicators and assessments on our local landscape for like infrastructure, computing power, uh, access to open high quality machine readable data and so on and so forth to, to benchmark other database frontier technologies that are emerging. Um, so I think it's an amazing initiative. And the key thing I would like to highlight is that 
we need high quality machine readable data. We need to enhance local innovation systems. We need to have uh, intersectional inequalities approach and consider the ethics and human centered dynamics of creating local ecosystems and um, ensuring that AI benefits society in general. And lastly, um, the last speaker spoke about the importance of global cooperation and international dynamics. That's also important, even though we're focusing on a local maturity assessment uh, framework. So um, in closing, the AI maturity assessment uh, framework can definitely enhance the latent value embedded within our society and, and can help inform responsible AI development and deployment uh, that reflect our contextual realities and also um, mitigate the risks associated with AI. There are a lot of risks associated with AI and given that the, there's different risks that are at the country at the global level that may not be applicable in our country's uh, context and vice versa. It's important to have a local maturity assessment framework and congratulations to the team. And I look forward to being part of the process and contributing uh, as much as I can. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that there was discussions about a multi-stakeholder approach. I think it's important to have civil society involved in the co-creation and the development. So beyond the public sector, beyond academia and the government, you definitely need civil society and essentially a bottom-up approach in developing uh, AI frameworks and strategies that enhance economic, social economic development and equitable uh, economic development, especially in South Africa, given that we are one of the most unequal countries in the world. So thank you for the opportunity to be here and I look forward to continuing my efforts as part of this project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samira. I think one point I typically have, I'm, so I'm a statistician by training. So I, I think definitely readable data is definitely going to be important in this project that, that I don't know how else we would measure um, impact on um, the maturity without readable data. Um, and I, I just want to perhaps just uh, again raise the point you mentioned there about the human-centered approach. We must not forget that as we develop the framework further um, to keep the human in mind. Um, and as you said, just to finish off there, um, it's definitely a multi-stakeholder approach. Um, and we need as many as possible to be involved. Um, so thank you very much, Shamira, for your talk. Um, talking about participation, we'll get to the Q&A now, but just to mention, I see that the link um, has been shared. Um, so we do want your input to participate in the project going forward. Um, so in the chat, um, you will see that there is a link on how you can get involved. Please participate. As we said, it's a multi-stakeholder approach. We need as much input and your input is extremely valuable for the success of the development of this framework. So please click on the link and complete the, well, the form that is given to you there. At the end of the session today, I will also share a QR link. Um, like everybody else, I'll do a lot of things on my phone. So I'll share a QR link at the end and you can scan the QR link if you are on your phone as well. Um, so for now, we'll move on to the Q&A session, and I might need some of my colleagues to help me in terms of fielding the um, any questions for the panelists. Um, we do not have too much time today. I see we've got a couple minutes left, so we may only be able to get to one or two questions. Um, but please know that we will feed any questions, any comments, any queries. Um, everything will be fed back to the project team, and this will be considered um, as we develop the framework further. So while we may only get to one or two questions today or comments or queries, we will feed back everything that has been placed in the Q&A and in the chat. We will feed that back to the wider project team as they develop the framework further. So let me see if I can, I'm not too sure if any of the my colleagues can help. Let's see if I can pick up um, a question in the chat. Ah, okay, let me pick up the first one that was there for Jacques. This one is for you. Please clarify the definition of improvement score for the impact of AI in, tele in telemedicine um, and then also which disease states are included in the assessments. Yeah, I think uh, for me to answer that question, we'll have to go back to the references that I've um, uh, shared. 
So in those references, they, they give us some exactly how they measured it and what tools they used. So that last slide of mine um, would provide that information. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. Um, there is another question here. Uh, perhaps this one would be for Shamira, I think. Let me, let me, yeah, well, for Shamira. So it says, will your initial survey include an, an assessment of AI adoption against the relevance in South African industry sectors and society? Um, Shamira, I think this speaks to your last point there about including civil society and the multi stakeholder approach. I'm on mute. Yeah. I'm sorry. What was the question again? I was just trying to navigate. Well, what the survey includes? So maybe maybe it's an all-encompassing question there. So yeah. will the survey include an assessment of AI adoption against relevance in South African industry sectors and society? Yeah. So end? I think. Yeah. Go so ahead. from what I understand about the question, it depends on the industries that you focus on. I think the, uh, according to our national development plan and other national uh, policy documents like the just transition framework which has key priority sectors i think you need to look at the key priority sectors that you have in all those national documents and see which has the highest potential for south africa to leverage ai yes ai is a ubiquitous technology but we have national priorities that have been existing before the uh, development of ai and we need to based on our current context find I guess low hanging fruits where there's most potential to reduce unemployment, to um, mitigate inequalities, to have uh, essentially more inclusive human flourishing for more South Africans. So thanks for the question. And I think that's a good point to consider. Thank you. Um, I don't know if we have time for one more. I don't know if my colleagues can help me. I'm, I'm trying to see in the chat as well. Um, Maybe I could come in, Humphrey. Sorry, this is... Go for the Deshni. Yeah, sure, the squeaky voice. Um, so there was a really good question in the in the chat um, by Roland Akindela. Can the panelists help to throw more light into the concept of AI sovereignty? as it relates to the African context. And I think this is a really, really good question, especially in the context of data and cross-border data transfer, as well as self-determination of uh, self-determination of African countries in AI governance. And as much as I would love to have a debate here, Roland, I'm gonna put you on a little bit of a cliffhanger and say in the engagements and the workshop sessions that we will be having, these are exactly the kind of questions that we will debate. Um, we also don't want to make it seem that or don't want it to be a situation where you ask the question, we answer it, and you go away with the answer. We want through these engagements and these debates for you to participate and tell us how do you see this happening in your sector, in your environment, in your company, whether you're a researcher or an innovator, so that we can co-create the right solutions when we have discussions like this. Um, it's not the direct answer you wanted, but I hope that it is more... Um, sustainable way for us to actually engage. So these are the kind of questions we will be looking at through our engagements with the public. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Deshni. I see on my side, we've got two minutes left. So I want to just try and share screen so I can put the QR code up um, in the chat. Um, Deshni, if you could just let me know, I see if you can see the QR code if I share, I'm not too sure if anybody it else. It is available, uh, yes. Yeah. Perfect. So the QR code, so we, we as we've been saying a lot, um, we, we do want everyone to get involved and participate. Your insights are crucial and extremely important as we go forward and we develop the framework further. The link um, for, the, for your participation has been shared in the chat, and this is just the QR code for that same link. So please engage, um, take part. Um, we will, as uh, was mentioned earlier on, we will have workshops, seminars, and, and forums going forward as we develop the framework to get your input um, as we develop um, the framework further. Um, yeah, I think that's about it from my side. As, as, as I mentioned earlier on as well, the questions that we have un been unable to address today, we will feed that back to the research team, the, the wider um, research or project, not so research, the project team um, that is working on the, the framework, um, and we will address them um, and include that um, within the development of the framework. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining today. Again, 
I'm so glad to see that there were so many participants that I just highlights the need and the importance of this project. So thank you very much, everyone, to our panelists um, and our speakers for today. Thank you so much for imparting your knowledge um, on us. And thank you so much for, for speaking again about the need for this framework. So thank you again, everyone. Um, participants, I hope that you will be included or you, that you do consider um, taking part in the project going forward. We do need your input, um, but otherwise have a lovely day further and hopefully we will see each other in the near future. Keep well, everyone. Thank you.